And we welcome you back to Big Board Sports on 104.5 at Team ESPN Radio. As promised, the all-time hits leader, the king himself, Pete Rose, Charlie Hustle, who will be making an appearance coming up in September at the Palace Theater. We're giving away tickets, by the way, on the program to that event, uh, the Broadway-style theatrical event that captures the golden years of America's pastime. And, of course, Pete Rose will be front and center, and he joins us here this morning on Big Board Sports. Pete, great to have you with us. Thanks for a few minutes. I'm doing great. It's a pleasure talking with you, and uh, we're right in the middle of a lot of action in the world of sports with the NBA going, the NHL going, baseball's in full uh, full swing right now, so there's a lot going on uh, for a sports fan right now. No doubt lots going on, Pete. And, uh, by the way, folks, the event is Friday, September 14th. You want to mark that down at the Palace Theater, and you can get your tickets uh, by visiting our website, 1045theteam.com. Uh, Pete, let's talk about what the night will entail. What will the fans hear and experience? Well, you'll have fun. I mean, uh, we make it a fun evening. Of course, we have a meet and greet. Uh, and, and we'll tell baseball stories, and we'll include guys like DiMaggio and Mantle and and Willie Mays and, and all the teammates I had, and, and I got great recall and funny stories. Mm-hmm. And uh, then we'll take questions from the audience, which is always a fun period for, for me when I'm on the stage. And uh, uh, people will laugh. Uh, people will, will leave there uh, in a good mood. We're not there to put anybody in a bad mood. We're not there to scald anybody or anything like that. We're there uh, to create good public relations for the world of baseball, and that's what we do, and we do it all over the country, and it's been very, very successful, I must say. And I'm looking forward to coming to Albany. Uh, you know, I was up in that area one time when I played for Geneva uh, in the New York Penn League, and of course I played in Wellsville and and Corning and Elmira and Auburn and and Erie was in the league, so. And that was a long time ago, but uh, it's always a pleasure to go different places and just get get to sit down and talk to people about the uh, the great game of baseball, especially the way uh, where it's being played today. There's a lot of great players out there today. We all know that. Pete, uh, your your resume is is impressive, certainly with what you accomplished uh, on the field and a 17 time All Star, three time World Series champion, long long list of, of great accomplishment accomplishments. But what is it in your career that you relish the most? Well, I have a lot of records. There's no question about that more than anybody else. But uh, the greatest record I have, uh, Chris, uh, and you'll understand this. Is, uh, and it's really a tribute to the teams I've played on and the teammates I've had. And I've had 11 Hall of Fame teammates. I played in 1,972 winning games. Mm. That's why you play the game. I try to emphasize this to kids all the time <clears throat> without getting in trouble with the parents. Uh, but you have to teach kids how to win. And you have to, it's like teaching a kid to get an A instead of getting a C. You know, if you're going to play a game, you might as well win it as opposed to losing. And, you know, I got it's over 250 more wins than anybody come in second. So, you know, it's really uh, what it's all about, and I've played a long time. But uh, you, you, the, re- the only reason you play is to win. I mean, and, and I wasted six uh, – I only had six good years in my career, and I say that because of this, because I lost three World Series and I won three World Series. All you play for is to go to the World Series. So my other 18 years were wasted as far as I'm concerned concerned because I didn't reach the World Series. <laughs> but 6 out of 24 is not bad, but, you know, you take a guy like DiMaggio, he played 11 or 12 seasons and played in 10 World Series. That's the kind of guy I want on my team. The great Pete Rose with us here on Big Board Sports and 104.5 The Team ESPN Radio. He was World Series MVP in 1975, a member of Major League Baseball's All-Century team. Roger and I both have you in our Hall of Fame. Not that that means much to you, Pete. I understand, but but obviously no. you have plenty of plenty of backing in terms of who believes you should be in Major League Baseball's Hall of Fame. I, I'm I'm sure you get this asked to you constantly. Uh, do you still feel like, hey, I deserve a plaque? I should be in the Hall of Fame, and do you no, wait I, for I don't, that day I don't, to come? I don't look at it like that, Chris. I mean, <clears throat> you know, every player in his or her sport, the ultimate goal would be to go to the Hall of Fame, okay? And I'm no different than anybody else that you'll have on your show. However, I'm not going to complain on your show about not being in 
Cooperstown because I'm the one who screwed it up, okay? Uh, I've been suspended 27 years, so I'm kind of over it. You know, I made the Reds Hall of Fame a couple years ago. I got my number retired a year ago. I got a statue a year ago, and that was important to me uh, because I'm from Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. I have all those three things in my hometown. Now, do I, th do I think I belong in the Hall of Fame? Sure, because the Hall of Fame is all about statistics. And all the mistakes I made was when I, when I was a manager. Okay, so I'm not here making any excuses. I screwed up, I broke the rules, and I've been punished. So for people who keep worrying about it, if I'm not worried about it, I don't know why anybody else should worry about it. You know, because I think my family uh, knows that what kind of player I, th I was, and I think my fans know what kind of player I was. Now, if it takes a, a plaque in Cooperstown uh, to get people to understand that, then, uh, you know, they're probably never going to find out because uh, I think baseball has already got it in their crawl that I'm not going to ever make the Hall of Fame, which is fine, which is fine with me. Pete, we've got Google and YouTube. We can learn all kinds of things uh, not associated uh, with a plaque. There's no doubt about that. The night is 4192, an evening with Pete Rose, Friday, September 14th at the Palace Theater. Tickets go on sale this Friday. And if you want more information, we've got it for you at 1045theteam.com. Uh, Pete, I have to ask you about hitting today in Major League Baseball. Yeah. Is, there, is there one or are there a couple of players you particularly really like to watch hit? Well, everybody likes to watch Trout hit, and everybody likes to watch Harper hit, but he don't hit for a high average. But I think one of the best hitters, if not the best hitter in baseball, is probably Al Tuve down in Houston. You know, let me let me give you a little stat. Uh, you know, uh, there were 7,033 hits in the month of May this past year, and there were 6,900 Ks, mm. okay, strikeouts. In, in, in 2008, in baseball, there were 32... 32, almost 33,000 uh, strikeouts. And this year they're on a pace to get 42,000 strikeouts. So the game has changed in that respect that guys don't care if they strike out as long as they hit home runs because the owners are paying them to hit home runs. You know, it, it gets kind of ridiculous when you every game you watch, or almost every game you watch, you look at the hit column and you look at the strikeout column and there's more strikeouts than hits. And I know there's some good pitching out there today, but there's not a lot of good middle relief pitching. If you watch baseball, Chris, which you probably do, or your listeners do, watch how many runs today are scored in the 6th, 7th, and 8th inning. Because not many teams have good middle relief pitchers today. What are middle relief pitchers, okay? They're guys that can't start, and they're guys that can't close. And when you get to the playoffs, all the guys who pitch for the relief during the season become spectators because if you get to the playoffs and your starter starts game one and you need a reliever in game three or four, they'll bring him back in. The guy that saves games not only pitches in the ninth now, he pitches in the eighth. And your setup man who usually pitches in the eighth is now back down to the seventh and eighth. So, you know, the, the middle relief pitchers during the season become spectators, frankly, <laughs> There's only a handful of teams that have good over, uh, good middle relief pitchers this year. And wouldn't it be nice if the Yankees had Houston starters? Wouldn't it be nice if Houston had Yankees bullpen? You know, the, the three best teams in baseball, I think, right now are in the American League. It's got to be Boston, the Yankees, and Houston. And uh, I'm not so sure that I don't think the best team in baseball right now is Boston because of, because of their offense and because of putting the ball in play. Last year, Houston led the league in putting the ball in play, and that's why they won the World Series. They didn't strike out, you know, 15 times every night, and that's the way the Red Sox are. The Red Sox got a lot of really nice non-home run hitters, but guys that can put the ball in play, and some guys that are hitting a lot of home runs because of the ballpark. And we're talking with Pete Rose here this morning on Big Board Sports. Nice to have you with us on 104.5 The Team ESPN Radio. And what a pleasure it is. Uh, Pete, let me ask you this. 24 years, you only struck out 70 or more times, three times. All right, that's pretty impressive. Launch angles, loss of small ball. Do you worry that some of what made baseball great when you played is now being lost? No, I don't worry about it because I can't control it. 
But I don't, I, I don't quite understand when you start talking about launch angles and stuff like that because these guys are big enough. If you hit line drives today in these ballparks they play in, the ball will go out of the ballpark. I mean, I'm going to tell you, Chris, and I don't know if you realize this or not, but I can name you, uh, you know, Camden Yards, Philadelphia, Cincinnati, you know, uh, Houston, uh, Arizona, Colorado. Those ballparks are band boxes, Texas. The balls fly out of there. You know, that's why everybody, I think everybody, everybody that plays baseball today, everybody is a potential home run hitter. And most of the time it's because of the ballparks. Sure, San Diego is a good pitching ballpark. Seattle is not a bad pitching ballpark. Uh, you know, Dodger Stadium is not a bad pitching ballpark. San Francisco, you can pitch there. But there are so many ballparks that, that these hitters take advantage of just because of the short porches. I mean, you see, you see the porch in, in, in Yankee Stadium in right center. I mean, you break a bat and hit the ball out of there. I saw, <laughs> I saw Bryce Harper a couple weeks ago right. break a bat in half, and three-fourths of the bat hit the back the backstop, and the ball went 407 feet. <laughs> now, you're going to tell me? You're going to tell me that the ball isn't, the ball isn't juiced? I mean, I know these guys are big, but how much bigger could they be than McCovey, you know, or Frank Howard or guys like that? There were big guys when I played. So, you know, uh, but if baseball wants the, the ball to be juiced, hey, the, the ball will be juiced because everybody pays to see home runs, and that's where we are in the world of baseball today. Pete, last thing, just out of my own personal curiosity here, I mean, I could, look, I could sit and listen to you tell stories all day and, and for that matter, all night long, and, and people in Albany will have the chance to do that Friday, September 14th. Was there one pitcher in your career you just hated to see on the mound? I couldn't hit Koufax. Hmm. I couldn't hit with an ironing board. <laughs> I mean, but, but a lot of guys couldn't. I mean, Koufax, you know, we used to have a nine-game road trip, Chris, where we would face Colfax Drysdale and Gibson, then go up to San Francisco and face Marichelle and Perry and somebody else, <laughs> and stop on the way home in St. Louis and face Gibson and Carlton and someone else. So that's nine games, seven Hall of Fame pitchers. Mm. That's a pretty rough. That's a pretty rough uh, road trip. I don't know if they have road trips like that today. I mean, I you know in my in my uh, career, I faced nineteen Hall of Fame pitchers, nineteen Hall of Fame pitchers now. You've got to be a pretty good pitcher to make the Hall of Fame, and a lot of them won 300 games. A lot of them were uh, really Class A relievers. You know, uh, but there again, there's some really good pitchers today out there. You know, there's 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 good pitching everywhere, but not overall good pitching, I don't think. But I could be wrong because I'm just a spectator watching on TV and listening on the radio. But I see, uh, you know, I see the velocity of these guys today, and. When they start talking to me about hitting, Chris, they make it sound like back in the 70s and 80s we didn't hit anybody that threw over 90. Right. Well, I believe Nolan Ryan threw over 90. I believe Gibson threw over 90. I believe J.R. Richard threw over 90. So most of the guys back in my day were 93 to 95 or 96, and the relievers will come out. They're smoking, too. So baseball didn't change that much. Sure, you don't have any Chapmans throwing 102, but Chapman can get hit, too. You know, the, the guy that invented baseball, Chris, was a genius because you'll never, never throw so hard that you can't hit it if you're in the batter's box. Pete, great stuff, man. What a pleasure uh, it is to have you uh, on this program this morning. 4192, that put, uh, put you ahead of Ty Cobb back in uh, 1985. And it's going to be an evening to remember with Pete Rose on Friday, September 14th at the Palace Theater. And go on to our 104.5 The Team website to get ticket information. Pete, again, thanks so much. Look forward to seeing you at the Palace in September. And uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for coming on the show. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you very much, and uh, enjoy your show. Have a great day.